right, so we just got fuel here in uh, Brush Cutters Bay. I think it's Brush Bush Cutters Bay. We are heading down to Eden in the morning. We've got a little low pressure system circling down there in Eden. Just north of there on Saturday or midnight tomorrow night. Uh, just it's light. We might have to buck into some wind a little bit, but the next within six hours of that, it just dissipates and we'll get right on into Eden. There we're going to wait out a weather window to get around, which would be about a week to get around on to uh, either King Island or on around uh, Adelaide. We we don't know for sure where we're going to get to, but uh, it's starting to get exciting. We got the sailing kiwis going, the cruising kiwis going with us. Sunrise is going with us, so. It's going to be exciting. If we can't get the weather windows across there, then we'll head back up here and just do the wet Sundays and the, the Great Barrier Reef, and, and we'll get in this Western Australia. But I think we can make it. It looks like we're going to be able to make it. We're going to find out. We're going to find out if we're sailors or not. <laughs> so stick with us as we get this done. Yeah, I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. I'll let it float away. Float away. In order to arrive at our destination during daylight hours, we had to get up and set sail early in the morning, just like our sail to Sydney, so we could get the 210 miles done with only one overnight shift. Hey, who woke up? Good morning. You stupid bird. Don't call a bird stupid. Why? Look at them socks. Them socks are rad. So we're in the morning. This episode brought to you by Cocoa Puffs. Coco Puffs. Our sponsor of the video is Cocoa Puffs. Hey. Hey, little girl. Mind the gap. I know that song. <laughs> so we're sailing from uh, Sydney Harbor down to uh, Eden, motor sailing. A lot of people ask us all the time in emails how to get started, how to get started in anything, whether it's following your dreams, started in business, started in in life, I mean, what do you do? What's the first step? And you know, there's lots of lots of answers to that. But for me, this is me. This is you know, I'm gonna tell you how I do things and what I did. I would think about things like if I, if I wanted a new house or a new car, I would start looking at new cars. I would start looking at the car I wanted, even if it was out of my price range. I would look at the if I wanted an airplane, I'd start looking at airplanes, and I'd just spend hours thinking of those things, and and then looking at prices and then I'd go back and look at what I was making and how much money I was making and what job I was doing and try to say well that job that career move is never going to get me to where I can afford that and so I think the first step the first step in and where to start is thinking about something long and hard and when you think about it, your subconscious kicks in and it starts, you start creating, I believe, this has always happened for me, I believe that my subconscious starts kicking in and I start making decisions to get to where I want to be. And, and I, it may be too much, I may obsess too much about something. When you think about something long and hard, it's just like negativity. If you think it negative long enough, it affects you, it affects your health, it affects everything you do. If you stress out about things and you're always got a negative view of life, I think that impacts you negatively. I think unforgiveness, I think not forgiving people impacts you negatively. And so the things you think about in here affect you 
physically and they affect you monetarily. I think it, it affects everything you do. You can either be a victim or you can be a victor. So get out there. Step one is start thinking about it and look at what it costs and look at what the barriers are for you to do that and start thinking about how you're going to overcome those barriers. And once you put your mind in motion, you'll see that things start to unfold for you and you just got to be willing to take the risk to, you know, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, I'm going to, you know, you're going to fail at some things along that path to get where you want to be. But the main thing is just that, I mean, I don't know why I think this, but I, I used to just obsess and think about things all the time. I, when I, when I uh, wanted an airplane, I, I went out and I started getting my pilot's license and, and I wanted to, I looked at airplanes all the time. I spent hours at the airport just watching them, smelling them, being around it. And it, 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 that, that fed the, the desire, the passion to keep doing that. I think there's a lot into that. When you, when you think about something long and hard enough and you're willing to take the risk to do what it takes, you can get it. After that point, it's just a matter of living the life you want to live. You know, a lot of people, they won't give up their lifestyles, their, their, you know, their two cars, their big house, or anything to, uh, to, have, a, to, have, a, uh, to have what they want because they're trying to keep up the Joneses, they're, they're trying to impress other people, they, they want to live a certain image, they want people to think a certain thing about them. And, and so a lot of people aren't willing to sacrifice to truly get what they want. And so they're always a prisoner of that, that world that, that you can become so much a prisoner of so easily. So that's my take, 101. I hope you enjoyed that. That's a, either a golden nugget or a lump of coal for you. Either way, you can burn them both. <laughs> What's real exciting is we are heading down to, uh, to Western Australia where there's lots of adventure. We have some other people we sailed with and they're gonna stay on the east coast of Australia, which is beautiful. There's no doubt there is some beautiful, beautiful places on the east coast of Australia. But they're really easy to get to. They're, uh, you know, it's it's all been done before, and lots of people go there because it's the normal cruising grounds. And so we're we want some. I want a little more adventure. I want to try going around the southern Australia. I don't know that we're going to make it around the bite. I hope we do. The weather's getting tight here, but uh, I want some adventure. I want I want to see things that very few people will go see and very few people will go do. Should be good. We've got about a week, a week and a half weather window. We got to wait out down here in Eden. That's the southeast tip of uh, Australia, where we wait for a weather window, and then we duck across the Bass Straits and get over to uh, southern Australia, Adelaide, Port Lincoln, and that part. Anyway, that's what we got for today, and uh, we'll check back in tomorrow and see what's going on. Pirates have boarded our boat. There's a dinghy. Our life is at stake. Where'd that come from? No, we're just kidding. It's uh, our friend's boat. They decided to come over and play Call of Duty with us. So I was asleep. I guess I didn't know that was happening. Yeah, who knows? They could be pirates. I mean, we never yeah. know. We don't know. Look, see, there's people on here that don't belong. Yeah. Who doesn't belong? Pirates. We're pirates. Pirates of the Pacific. You ready for the next riddle? You ready? If it takes a man a week to walk a fortnight, how many peas in a barrel of grapes? <laughs> if it takes a man a, a, a week, week to walk a fortnight? 
How, how many peas? But a fortnight is two weeks. Yeah, I know it. How many peas in a barrel of grapes? What are peas? I know, that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. But there's actually, no, there's no peas in a barrel of grapes. It's a man a week to walk a fortnight. How many peas in a barrel of grapes? Nothing. It doesn't there's make any nothing, sense. There's nothing in a, in a barrel of grapes because it's all grapes. That Zero. It doesn't make any sense. Wrong. Wrong. Wrong? Yeah. Fortnite? Don't ask the Hamel boys. Do not ask the Hamel boys. But you're wrong. But what does the pea and the grape have to do with it? All right, I'm working it. I'm working it. Take well, Dad, a fortnight is two weeks and it takes a dude to walk. That's a distraction. He didn't, ask many, a, he didn't ask a question about a fortnight. Ow. There's not a question there. Oh, how many peas, the letter P, in a barrel of grapes? One. Uh, how many grape. what? Grape. Oh, yeah, one letter in a barrel of grapes. One P. One P. Uh, you got it. That was me! Oh. Woo! One more, I'm listening. Uh, so, this, this one's easy. I think Benny will get this straight away. Uh, what is at the beginning of eternity, the end of time and space, the start of every end, and the end of every race? E, the letter E. It's so easy. E, the letter E. It's so easy. Or, if you didn't like that one, Keith is always in those places. Oh my god. Oh, I could do it. Easy. This isn't an apple, this is tea. Don't don't drink, don't eat the apple. I don't care what she says. Don't listen to her. I got the old hoodie out, guys. Oh my gosh, yeah. what are you wearing? Oh, I love it. So it's like it's so, it wraps me up, it's so wonderful. Jack, come up here and, and uh, share your little adventure last night on Ice Shift. What happened? The autopilot just uh, went to standby. And he was playing some... his game. No, I wasn't. I was and watching. he was not focused. Right. He was going to be spinning circles for an hour, dude. No, it was that. not. It, wasn't it had to have been because it was about five miles of big circles. When you, when you no. hung at that line, it no, was. No, no, because I watched like. I remember because I came out here and we were on course and I went and sat down and watched like a few videos, probably all added up to about 20 minutes worth, 20 or 30 minutes. And then I came up here and I saw we you were, go five miles. I How saw the you? wind, I saw the wind shifted and then I looked at the chart a little closer and the, our waypoint was behind us. I was like, wait, hold up, hold up. Let's just see. I came up here and I saw us, the autopilot was on standby as I was. So you search your stream, and then we'll calculate how long the videos were. That's uh, the, really I'm good. I'm excited, or I'm glad that you knew our heading at least, and you got us back look, on track. Look out here, guys! Look at that. <laughs> I know. Oh, I don't want to see. Uh, You're oh just uh, from just from here to here, not counting the loops. <laughs> so let's do. I mean, uh, we literally went in circles. Let's do. Lucky you didn't crash into the shore. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh. Here's the other one. <laughs> well, That's got to like that. <laughs> Pans out quite a bit. <laughs> oh, you can really see that. Maybe go in circles. Kate can see the circles. I know. I'm going back in there. Oh. <laughs> Look at that track. Wow. Right, so from where he started turning. How'd you not feel it? To where he came out of the turn. They were big oh, circles, a, yeah. I guess. That's two miles right there. Sure. Two miles, just as a straight line. If you turn, so there's 20 minutes. There's 20, 20 30 minutes. All right, and then you add the loops, and the loops are the loops like it's like a kite. So the loops <laughs> are a mile. So there's one, two, three, four, 
five, six miles. So that's an hour. We were looping for an hour. I don't think it was an there, hour, but I don't recall being, I don't recall not checking stuff for an hour. Because you on your phone. No. It's just time flies when you're having fun. fun. It's a good thing we were I wasn't. I was watching political stuff on my phone because it was the last, it was like the last hour of my shift. So I came up here at like. It must have been some good political stuff. <laughs> I don't know, man. Because there's six, seven That's miles. Okay, of... good lesson learned. Always know you're heading and always look at the run line. Again. Yeah, if it was you doing it, you'd wake Dad up to get about. Oh, I would. I'd have been freaking out, going, "Oh my gosh." What are you gonna do first? Uh, I'm gonna eat breakfast, and uh, then second, we're second grade. gonna see what happens. Sweet. Yeah, it says there's a skate park right over there, so yeah, maybe gotta check. Done your research. Priorities, buddy. You have beach though. That's like paradise. That's I feel like I'm in New Zealand right now. It's yeah, I don't cold. know about paradise, but it is kind of pretty. And it's like Hey guys, coming to you live from Eden, Australia. We're gonna jump right into the Q&A, but first off, I wanna do a quick shout out to Omar, Amy, Eli, and Mia. Congratulations, guys. Baby number three is on the way. It's in the oven, it's baking. FedEx is sending it, it's Federal Express. Should get there in about nine, eight more months, I think. Once again, congratulations, guys. Uh, thanks for including us in your family. With that being said, we're jumping right off into the Q&A, and the first question out of the box is from a Z Crew member, Ethel Beagle. How does the autopilot work on SV Zatara? Well, it doesn't work very good when Jack's in here at midnight and he's playing on his uh, computer, and the autopilot goes off because sometimes they do trip off, and you spend an hour out in the middle of the ocean doing big 360 circles, and then your son realizes at three o'clock, three thirty in the morning that. Something doesn't seem right. Fortunately, we were motoring along and we didn't have any problems, but lesson to all of you, pay attention, pay attention. Autopilots aren't foolproof. They do go off, they do trip off, and so you gotta be paying attention. And fortunately for us, it's another one of those learning, learning experiences for my kids where they realize they've gotta pay a little more attention. But uh, our autopilot works really good. Um, we've got two of them on the boat because I like redundancy in that. I've heard horror stories of people having to hand steer across oceans and across passages. And so we have dual hydraulic pumps. Uh, we have dual uh, computers. We have dual uh, uh, everything when it comes to the autopilot. Now those aren't installed. The computers are installed, but the pumps are in boxes. So all I do is change one pump out, put the other one in. One day I may plumb them all in, but for now they're just uh, in boxes and I've got the spare parts to do that. Ethel, thanks for reaching out to us and thanks for the question. Next question is from uh, Jao Estado, Estadio. Question number one is, what's your solution for mosquitoes? And number two, uh, we did pass by Portugal, but the next time we'll go by there. Uh, first question, what do we do about mosquitoes? You know, we must put off a bad smell because mosquitoes don't really bother us like they bother a lot of people. In some places we do get mosquitoes, but for the most part we don't. We, we use bug spray, you know, cancer causing stuff, anything that'll spray on and kill us and the bugs, that's what we try to find. You know, it's just like sunblock, you put enough of that chemical on your body pretty soon, you won't get any sun cancer, but you're gonna get something else. No, we, uh, we just use bug spray if the mosquitoes are bad, and, and we really haven't been anywhere that I remember mosquitoes being really, really bad. So, great question, and, and that's how we deal with it. And moving right along, all right, next question coming out of the box is from Merlin Broadus. So towards the end of the video, it showed only inches deep. How deep or shallow is too shallow? The minimum amount one can kiteboard on. Well, you learn that lesson the hard way. I've kited in, in you know two inches of water, and Jack and all of us have, and it's fun when you're you're going about in a foot of water, or, you know, uh, uh, you know, a half a meter of water or less. It's fun. You just don't want to wreck. When you I don't do big aerial tricks or anything like that in shallow waters because when you wreck, you hit the sand underneath. I like to be in deep water when we're trying tricks and we're going really high. 
but it's fun to go cruising across the shallow water. It's it's fun. So you can kite board in anything. You have to have deeper water for foiling, but you can twin tip in any kind of water. You just want to make sure if you wreck, you're okay with what you're wrecking on. In a lot of places in the ocean where there's little sand spits and lots of shallow water, there's also broken coral in there. And if you land hard on that coral, it can scratch you up and cut you up. So uh, once again, great question, Merlin. Thanks for watching the show. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of the Q&A. We want to thank everyone for watching the show. And once again, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water.